Okay, so now we're going to just go over eddy currents. In the examples of induction phenomena considered thus far, the induced currents resulting from induced EMFs have been confined to well-defined paths in wires and other components forming a circuit. However, many pieces of electrical equipment contain masses of metal moving in magnetic fields or located in changing magnetic fields. In such situations, it is possible to have induced currents that circulate throughout the volume of the materials because of their circulating nature. We call them eddy currents. As an example, consider a disk that rotates in a magnetic field perpendicular to the plane of the disk but confined to a limited portion of the disk's area as shown here. Element OB, so this element here, this triangular element OB, is moving across this uh, portion of this, magnet this circular magnetic field that's going through at in this location. It has an EMF induced in it. Elements OA and OC are not in the field but in common with all other elements located outside the field. These provide a return conducting path along which charges displaced along OB can return from B to O. A general eddy current circulation is therefore set up in the disk somewhat as sketched. So these eddy currents appear here. If you look at this side for example and it's moving round, we've got a magnetic field going in this direction. So if we point our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field and we put our palms to oppose this motion like that then we can see that the thumb is, will be the direction on that particular part there the thumb will be the direction of the induced and you can see here that that's the case you, you're going down here yeah? now of course as you come out of this area these are going to uh, swing round and cause these circles so you get these circular eddy currents so I'll just repeat here fingers in direction of magnetic field and palm against the direction of rotation the thumb then points downwards in area uh, where the magnetic field is Hence, the EMF there causes current to flow downwards, which will then eventually return back to O, causing circular eddy currents. So that's what's happening there. The currents in the neighbourhood of radius OB experience a side thrust that opposes the motion of the disc, while the return currents, since they lie outside the field, do not experience such a thrust. The interaction between the eddy currents and the field therefore results in a braking action on the disc. This apparatus finds some technical application and is known as an eddy current break. As a second example here of eddy currents, consider the core of an alternating current transformer shown. So we've got this current transformer, there's the primary winding, there's the secondary winding. Now I've drawn in a couple of magnetic field lines. Now of course that this is AC, so it changed the current is changing direction all the time. So the magnetic flux is going to also change direction. If we look at the slice from A to B then uh, looking at that this bit of the metal here we're going to get these eddy currents. Now those eddy currents are produced because it's trying to generate a flux to oppose this flux. The eddy currents are very undesirable both because of the energy they dissipate and because of the, f the flux they themselves set up. In all actual transformers the eddy currents are greatly reduced by the use of laminated core that is one built up of thin sheets of lamini. The electrical resistance between the surfaces of the laminations due either to a natural coating of oxide or to an insulating varnish effectively confines the eddy currents to individual lamini. The flux through each loop then and the resulting EMF are small and the currents and the heating effects are minimised. So eddy currents can be used as a brake can be quite useful because we can make brakes out of them using the eddy current brakes but often quite often they're quite undesirable effects so we have to try and mitigate those effects by you know working out some kind of method to not absolutely eliminate it but reduce it to as much level as possible